Riverbend Talent brought to you by the Halpha Music Company and by Mr. Matt Van Voris of Macias Insurance. Barry Macias, deadhead. <laughs> Indeed, Barry yep. Macias is a deadhead. It's on his sign. How many signs do you see around town has got the... Uh, well, steal you your face. Thing, steal steal your face. face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is definitely a uh, deadhead. So, yes. so thank anyways. You, thank you, Barry Macias. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, uh, thank you to our guest. Sam McGinnis. Or Buddy. Cornfish. Which one? <laughs> Well, my last name is McKinnis. It's Samuel McKinnis, and uh, they called me the Cornfish. Uh, it's kind of a, a term of endearment nickname I got. Uh, kind of an interesting story how that came about. Yeah. Um, we were at a music festival, Sugar Creek, one, one I'm involved with every year for the past 10 years. We're celebrating our 10th year anniversary this year. So please come down to Southern Illinois and enjoy Sugar Creek for them. Uh, but um, we were there, and it's raining. One of my friend's bands didn't get to play because the rain rained us out for a little while, about two and a half hours, so we lost the set. A friend of mine lost the set. Well, a buddy of mine was sitting there, and he was having a great time, and everybody's having a great time, and um, he just jumps to his feet all of a sudden and just screams out the word, Cornfish, at the top of his lungs. <laughs> and all I hear through the trees is like, coming out there having a great time and everybody's having fun and everything you know and i was like you know what that'd be great so i made this picture for him that was uh i like to do digital art and stuff too and i made this picture for him and it was uh, colonel cornfish and if you see my first logo it's colonel cornfish he's got a little colonel hat on and it's mario it's a guy it's it's like a like a cartoon version of him as a corn fish right you know <laughs> and i was like you know what i made it for him i called him colonel cornfish uh, and I'm, I'm like just one of the cornfish army i'm not the colonel you know i'm right. just i'm just cornfish <laughs> the colonel now i'll swim to the edge of the field and back for that guy i swear you know but uh it's like the amazing <laughs> colonel cornfish <laughs> pop and swim me 20 is what what the thing was is kind of a funny thing and yeah. we were sitting around I was like well what are we going to name this band you know I was like I don't know something interesting I don't want it to be the Sam McKinnis band that just seems kind of odd you know I don't yeah. want to be that you know so we were sitting there thinking I was like you know what the only thing that's coming to mind the only thing I can think about <laughs> right now is two words and I looked at the boys I was like look two words now, now you may think I'm nuts Cornfish. <laughs> and they went, yeah, yeah, okay, that sounds kind of cool, actually. Cornfish. So I made this butter font. You know, this is a corn and fish, and it looks like it's melted butter. And I put it over the top. I was like, cornfish, there we go, you know. And the next thing, you know, uh, everybody started calling me cornfish. And it became my, like, family name, you know. Everybody gets a family name, you know, some, yep. some different names, you know. And I ended up being cornfish, and I, everybody sees me. That all they say is, "Hey, it's cornfish." <laughs> no, they don't even call me by my name hardly. Mm. So it's, it's great. So I just said, "You know what? I'll take it. I'm cornfish from here on out. I am cornfish." And even the members of the band said, "You are cornfish. You are the face <laughs> and the voice of cornfish. So that is you." Sounds like One, sounds great. Okay, once the I'll family be. is named you, you don't get to choose to not be named. <laughs> no, that. It doesn't exactly. matter. You can't it's say mine. I don't want that name. I, yeah, I can't yeah. say that. It's no. mine. They stuck it on me, and I'll graciously accept it because that's what you do. There you go. You Kudos it. to the digital art. I was checking some of that out oh, uh, yeah. on your social media. You're on Facebook, yeah. and uh, I checked out your YouTube channel as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, anywhere else we can find you. Um, really right now, only on YouTube and Facebook. Um, to be honest with you, I may be uh, an audio productionist and all that stuff. And I've been computer savvy for years, but I'm so busy. I just, I've only stuck to those mediums at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I could sure use anybody out there who wants to help me be <laughs> a digital content manager for me right. and help me fix this stuff up. Maybe give me some ideas and directions to go with that. I would be really gracious and appreciative of anybody who want to step up and help me focus that part of it because I yeah. really am not that great at it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, it's hard to keep up with it all. Well, I'm an artist. I'm always busy doing, yeah, doing yeah. things, you know, playing, trying to get better at music, trying to, do, mm -hmm. you know, trying to do these things and that things. And, and I'm also a professional stagehand, so I go out of town for weeks, for a week at a time and do big, big shows so, for other people. 
So let, let's uh, let's get in into it. B- before you were a stagehand and before you were cornfish, mm-hmm. when you were a young boy in yeah, Southern you Illinois, were a wee little lad back yes. in the motherland. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> where, where, where'd you get a guitar at and start this sh- thing? <laughs> kind of interesting. You want to know? Okay. Um, when I was three years old, someone gave me a box top guitar because I was really into the Blues Brothers. Okay. Nice. I, I carried around this little four track. This is them showing my age. Uh, four track, uh, eight track player. Okay. Right, a little handheld portable eight track player, and I had a briefcase full of blues, and nice. I played that thing. I think the, the the albums I had on eight track were Zeppelin, Four, Kiss, Destroyer. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. A briefcase full of blues. Uh, 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 let me think. Let me think. Oh gosh, what else did I have? Like a uh, um, uh, Steve Miller band uh, and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I had, nice. I had this eight track player and I carried it around all the time. And I pulled this guitar around and I called it Matt Guitar Murphy. Yeah. And I, this, is, this is when I was a little kid. I remember uh, one of my cousins came over and stepped on it and broke my heart. And oh, destroyed no. it for me. But you know, uh, later on, fast forward, I'm like. 15 years old or so i saw a harmony guitar in a pawn shop a little amp and i was like boy i'd like to have that i'd like to try that you know i get i love music so much yeah you know i mean really love music my whole life so i decided well let me see let me get that you know and um i got it and i twiddled with it i played like uh one string smoke on the water uh, thing but, uh, you know, that kind of thing going <laughs> Greatest on. Greatest riff of all yeah, time. Oh, yeah. yeah. My first actual song I could play from start to finish happened to be Heart Shaped Box by Nirvana. Okay. Wow. Which happened to be in Drop D, and somebody showed me how to tune in the guitar. I mean, I grew up in a time when there wasn't the internet. Right. Okay, so there, there, was, right. there was no um, tutorials for anything. Uh-huh. I lived in the country on a Christmas tree farm. With a wood-burning furnace, an old country boy, with my pony and my pig and my chickens and right. my, a goat. I had a pet skunk when I was a kid at one point in time. We had squirrels. Literally had squirrels. We raised some pinkies. My mom was only made clamping and a nurse. So, mm-hmm. and um, But I lived out there, and my parents bought me drum set, bass rig, guitar wow. rig. You know, everything I need. I had this old Pioneer stereo system that was from the 70s that was, ran on 220. And I, I, I would unplug my air conditioner <laughs> to play a massive stereo that had like 12 speakers all the way surrounding my drum kit so I could listen and play along with whatever was on the radio. Right. Now, it wasn't any good, but I tried. And I kept trying, and I kept trying, and I kept trying, and I kept trying. And eventually... Like my dad says, he's like, oh, man, I put up with a lot of really horrible noise before anything remotely decent came out of here. <laughs> First gig I played, I played guitar, and they said, don't ever sing. You just, you're just not a singer. And now it's like I flipped that script yeah. upside down. I'm like, yeah. well, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, no, but I man. think I got a grasp on how to sing. You sound. do, man. <laughs> so, you know. You can, you can hear that Blues Brothers inspiration because it's very yeah. soulful sound that yeah. you got, uh, definitely. Oh, so many inspirations for me. I mean, uh, my gosh, Elton John. I do Elton John. I love Elton John. I like. I noticed he Freddie hasn't Mercury. mentioned Ario Speedwagon yet. You know, being from Southern Ario Illinois. Speedwagon? Well, yeah, of course, being from Southern <laughs> Illinois, I've right. seen Ario Speedwagon like eight or nine times <laughs> live. One of my favorite bands ever is Styx. Oh yeah. And I've seen them a bunch of times. You know, they're, um, they're from a little farther north in Illinois. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, still, it's Styx. You know. Oh yeah. <laughs> I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. It's a river. Welcome to the ground. Illusion. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're absolutely gorgeous. Good I stuff. love sticks. Yeah, they're. Um, geez, my yeah. gosh. But Freddie Mercury. Yeah. You want to talk so. about one of the most all time best performers yeah. ever. Freddie Mercury. So, like, when you hear me sing, do these long, big notes and stuff, you, you could just tell yeah, that, that I was influenced sure. by things like that, you know. So, so at 15, you get the guitar? Yeah. And, and and you're you're lucky enough I, that you have parents that will get you drums and yeah. bass and all this stuff. Oh, yeah. 
And, and so, but but like in high school, you didn't, did you play in any bands or anything no, at that time? Or you no, just trying to I figure it out. I watched all the other people do it. Yeah, and just trying to figure just it out. Just trying to figure it out. Yeah. Nobody was helping me. I'll be honest with you. I wasn't the most popular kid in school. <laughs> right. you know? I've always been a big boy. You know. And uh, I call it voluptuous. But voluptuous. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> big Ben. <laughs> Big bounce, not fat and big bounce. Right. Right? So, yeah. so, so no, no high school bands or anything. No, uh, no. That's, that's and the, then after high school, you go to college. But well, I mean, in high school, I started an internship at a radio station. Oh, there you go. So, uh, while was you were still in high school, club, and I was in the school band, and I played uh, stand up bass for the jazz band a little here, and there, you know, but. Yeah. Um, Mostly, I got into the electronics club and stuff, and you know, I'm a computer nut and all that stuff. And then um, I just uh, just moved into the radio station. I was thinking, you know what? I want to be a radio person. You know, I want to be a disc jockey. I want to be. What were you thinking? I want to be the next Howard Stern. <laughs> you know, I'm like, right. yeah, that's true. I want to be the guy interviewing people and having fun and, and cutting jokes on the radio. Mm -hmm. And um, so I started doing that, and then I started getting into the production idea making commercials yeah. and stuff like all the imaging liners for 97 7 the bear and tao in the late 90s early 2000s you could hear if you went back and got to listen to their archives of all that stuff you would hear me doing foley artistry and different things for those those liners and stuff like you know your uncle gets drunk at the at the at the fourth of july picture i'm like where's my car keys <laughs> give me my car keys you know right, stuff like right. that and he slips and falls off the dock oh jesus <laughs> she's in the water you know uh, did this one where um it sounded like you know uh, i was talking about a drive through you know getting fast food or whatever so you hear the car pull up and stop at the at the speaker roll down the window and you hear like the night kind of like little noises and then you hear a crackle crack, crack, can I get your order you know right. that kind of thing a crackly speaker you can barely hear what they're saying so he, he makes his order he goes up to the window you can hear the car pull up to the window and stop again and then the window opens up and you can hear like the cash register inside and people inside and them hand him a wrestling bag out the window and all that stuff you know <laughs> and he goes, he goes oh Oh, something about it was like, I can't right. even remember, but it was like he didn't get his order right. You yeah. know? <laughs> like, oh, man. Typ typical drive through typical story. Drive through yeah. story. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, putting together all the sound effects that tell yeah. a story is always mm -hmm. fun to do yeah. something like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the yeah. window was me squeaking, squeaking on the floor with right. the shoe and, yeah. and different things, you know. I had like all the imaging yeah. stuff from liner, uh, all the sound effects from uh, the yeah. different sound effects packages you, they had at the radio station. I got to use those and. A crackling fire. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, it, it is fun to try and tell a story through sound effects like yeah, that. It's you know, theater so. of the mind. Theater of the mind. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. So, so that got me interested in, in production. So, so, so you, you had the internship at high school. Who was that with? Uh, it was uh, uh, with uh, Cumulus. Yeah, down in uh, in, in Southern uh, Illinois. Right, and what what station was it? Oh, geez, um, uh, WDBX and then WMIX. And so on and so forth. W three D, right? Uh, yeah, ninety seven seven. Uh, all those. So after it was a conglomerate, of right? Course, conglomerate. You know. So after high school, how did did you get to keep the job? Or well, I kind of did, um, and then I ended up doing another internship for another radio station for college credit. Right. And that was with Clear Channel, and that was W three D. Uh, and all that stuff. That was the other one. Well, no, this was the first one was like Z100 and all those guys. And then this, then I went over to W3D and all that for the college internships. And, and what college did you go to there? Uh, SIU Carbon Carbondale. Mm -hmm. Nice party town. Very much yeah. so. Well, not so much. It, it had calmed down a little bit. Halloween calm. <sighs> Halloween was calmer than it had been when my parents were kids. They say, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, but Carbondale was a party town. Yeah, it was a yeah, it was a pretty pretty party in college back oh, in the right. day. So, oh, yeah. so you went to Carbondale and, mm -hmm. and you're going for radio. You got mm -hmm. the internship. Mm -hmm. Where does that lead you to? Uh, it led me to a television station internship as well. Wow, nice. and that was with WTCT Television, the Christian Television Broadcasting System out of Marion, Illinois. Right, and I was like, well, I'm going to learn about camera work and directing and doing all this other stuff too you know it's like i i'm i'm one of these people who have this insatiable appetite for learning new things like i believe that you're a human being you have infinite potential 
to learn anything you want to. You just got to take the time yeah. and, and have the patience with yourself to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, your so, brain is a computer. You can is. program it to do whatever you oh, want, whatever but how much want. time does it take to do this, this or this, that? Yeah, you got to decide that. what's worth putting the effort into. One for of my sure. college professors told me one time, he's like, it would be better to be the best in the world at one thing than. Yeah, kind of good at a lot of things, and I told him you're wrong <laughs> because variety is the spice of life. Right, and life should be explored by uh, any means necessary and all means possible. Do what do what makes you happy. Yeah. You know, follow things, follow through with ideas, do something with yourself. So yeah, and that diversity allows you to get different jobs. Oh yeah, I mean, it's just, just you know, we always got to find a job from this yeah. job to that job. So. Yeah. But you know, uh, uh, when I started in radio, as you guys probably understand very mm. fully, when when I started, this was like '96, when there was a job for every station, mm. and everybody had jobs, and there was yeah. like. What was 50 jobs went down to four. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You yeah. understand oh, yeah. exactly what Absolutely. I'm talking about. Absolutely. I mean, when I started radio, there was a lot of jobs. I was thinking, I've got this. This is going to be what I do. Yeah. Right. And it wasn't for realized, our sponsors, we probably wouldn't be here. That's what we say all the time. We <laughs> totally mean that because, you know, <laughs> someone's seriously. actually paying to have us on. That's amazing. That's yeah. very amazing. And, and I want to say thank you to these sponsors. Keep these guys working. These guys deserve this. I mean, this is... <laughs> This is the thing that they wanted for their lives. We better mention them. Help so, Music Company yeah, and Mr. Mad Van Force and Macias Insurance continue. Cornfish. Right. Certainly. Yeah, yeah. So, so you get hired on it, or you get at the TV station you mm-hmm. next, uh, and, yeah. and how, where does that take you? Uh, I do a lot of stuff with that, and uh, that internship goes through, and I stick around for a little while doing master control work, running cameras, working at Dove Productions, uh, filming different uh, Christian programming or whatever and um, eh, I just kind of move on you know yeah, and yeah. move on to different things and then and then life happens then yeah life happens well you had some life happening too yeah I've had some life happening. you got well, some stories to uh, tell just about what's happened yeah, to you from, along from the, the way. television stations when I got into doing the the, the Nashville recording program because that was like midway through my college degree okay and then I then I I because of my experience working at the radio station, doing all the production work there, when I got into the, because you had to have a couple years in before you actually got into the recording engineering program. Right. When I got there, I had more knowledge about that than most of the other students by far, and I was like the lead guy in the in the lab. You know, I was the guy nice. helping other people do their stuff. Right. You know. Um, and uh, working with a guy named Mike Lasilius was my teacher, who's also the guy who's from Misunder Studios in Murfreesboro, Illinois, and he's a great guy, and uh, I really look up to him. He taught me a lot. But, um, you know, it was kind of cool having all that pre-instilled yeah. ideas of how mm-hmm. editing systems work mm-hmm. to help other people learn, you know. And um, had to do some stuff through there. Like we went out to a place called Trace Ombres and recorded this really nice band with some horns and different stuff in it kind of going on. It was really, really sweet. And we were all sitting there. And um, our our assignment was is you're going to mix one song from the night, you know. And I picked one that had, he gave me one. No, no, that's what I remember. He gave me one that had like mess ups, uh, this and that. And the other. he's like, here, do that, you know. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay, so one microphone went on for half of it, and this and that and the other. I had to figure out how to do that, and I ended up automating it to where everything fades in and out, and just have different solo parts automated in, and I made it sound really, really spectacular for the time. And uh, it was like, we're listening to all these tracks, and we get to mine, and the whole class goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, was, that was a proud moment. You yeah, know? Right, yeah. A proud moment. Just things you remember about things you've done, and spent hours and hours mm-hmm, working on that yeah. thing. I spent probably eight, eight to twelve hours on that song, where everybody else spent two on theirs. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I went home and did it. <laughs> I didn't just do it there. <laughs> I knew what I was doing enough to take it home with me. You know, because I had a little Pro Tools unit at home, and I got to mess with it at home. Right. So I'm sitting there with my headphones on, messing with it at home, and then I take it to the studio at the college, and I take my files and everything with me and go put it in there and listen to it on the real reference <laughs> <laughs> and then tweak it some more. Right, right. You know, by the time I got to present it, it was like, oh, it was good, nice. you know. Uh, my college thesis was an album for a girl named Sarah Fossey. 
And um, unfortunately, due to fires and different things, I, I no longer have possession or even uh, any reference to no, that whatsoever. Yeah. Everything yeah. I ever had about that is completely gone. Speaking, which, speaking of references, Sam is referencing a fire, a fire that he had. Fire. Yeah. Uh, what was that, fire. last summer? Yeah, it was, it was uh, um, just after our, our, our anniversary. Um, our 19th anniversary was March 15th, and on the 25th of March, um, you know, one of those little um, um, entertainment centers that have little fireplaces in them. You yeah. know, this is like for have little heaters in them, or right, like yeah. the show and all that stuff. And like, okay, well, I bought one of those, and folks, don't ever buy one of those. <laughs> the, those are dangerous. <laughs> Uh, it cost me everything I own, okay? Mm. It cost me a van full of front of house gear. It cost me my house. It cost me, you know. Uh, all this irreplaceable stuff like tapes oh, that you, you worked yeah, on, the, projects the you worked on, were, pictures you took. I was, I was took. working on projects yeah. that will never see the light of day. Mm. Yeah. I mean, right. they've never been put out in any way, any other medium other than what was on the computer I had at home I was editing on. Yeah. I mean, literally, like, most of my material was on there yeah. in another way I was trying to work out doing stuff all by myself uh, <sighs> given I, I swear to God one of these days I swear I want to set up a set for my friends and family where I mic everything up like literally do the whole stage up myself every part of it like set up everything drum kits mics everything and start at the drum kit <laughs> and record a song and play one song for 20 minutes to get a five-minute song out where I could show I could play everything on that stage <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> for one of my songs, just to do that uh, yeah. one time, just just for the fun of it, you know? Because it's like, uh, it's kind of funny when you, it's like, I got all these parts in my head, I can like, oh, I can play that, I can do this, do that, right. but I can't do it all at one time. You're not so, trying hard enough. You can do it all at one time. Sure. Just try a little little now. Do the one man bath that you see the thing uh, where they got all the oh, plays yeah. and straps yeah. and stuff on <laughs> jingle bells and whack, whack on my hand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Would you mind telling the story about the ukulele and the fire? Oh. Uh, well, to, you don't have to. I, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Um, well, um, what's what really hurtful about that story is right. my puppy. Right. At, at a. <sighs> I decided I was going to take on a puppy, and I said this was going to be the last puppy uh, I ever raised. Yeah. <laughs> and his name was Elwood, and he was a, a St. Bernard um, Chocolate Lab Mix dog. And he was just the biggest baby of a lab dog you ever had in your life. And he, he had catchphrases like, this is glue, strong stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right, right, exactly, yeah. Well, Blues Brothers, yeah. once again, Elwood, I had yeah. Elwood, right? You know, it was, it was my, he was my Elwood Blues, you know? Mm -hmm. I was so happy to have him, and unfortunately, he got trapped in there, and he laid down on top of the ukulele case. And one of the only instruments that made it out <laughs> was the ukulele. Right. Yeah. Uh, and you'd had that a long time, right? The ukulele? Or? Well, that was an Oscar Schmidt, and it was a really nice one that I just got for my, actually, for my birthday. Okay. So, um, that wasn't very old. Uh, thank God I was going out to perform with my Martin over here, because this is one of my prized possessions and it has been for a long time. This is a very expensive, decent playing instrument. Right. I mean, it's one of those instruments yeah. that. If you, if you if you play, you really want something like this, yeah. You know, and it's my prized possession. It was like when my grandmother passed away. I bought this in her honor because she would have wanted me to have something that I could play mm. that was really decent, nice to actually perform with. Yeah, and I've used that thing since two thousand five, two thousand six. Nice. It's an old five. So. so, and the ukulele's still around, too. Uh, yeah, the ukulele's still around. I got it in my it's house. It's been spotted at shows, right, Big Ben? It's been Big spotted at shows. <laughs> sure has. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting to have stories about your instrument as well. So. Oh, yeah. I lost a lot of instruments in that fire. I bet. Oh, yeah. my God. I bet. I had a ball with a wall unit piano that burned up. <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, stuff you know. it's, Yeah. Yeah. It's, so your YouTube channel is mainly live music, uh, Facebook videos as well, mm -hmm. with some uh, live music. Well, yeah, uh, there's some live stuff on there. That, there's some earlier stuff. Um, uh, I did have some earlier cuts that we just did 
on the fly one day at Miss Under real quick just to throw out there for bars and all that. I, I was proud of them at the time, but man, they, they, those songs have come such a long way. Kind of archive those. What I'm hoping to do now is, is present new stuff so that uh, the venues and the and the you know the, the just the the festivals and the and the events that want to hire who want to at least look at me and hire me might see a more modern version of what I'm doing. Right. right? Yeah. See, because um, I took a long hiatus from music, guys. I mean, like over years, because I ended up being. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was literally talking with like Sony in Nashville. And then my mother passed away mm. and left me with my great grandmother. And I swore she'd never go into a nursing home. I mean, this woman paid for my college. Right, she yeah. paid for my college. She took care of me. Her and her husband uh, were the best people to me ever. No one could compare other than my actual physical parents All right. to how they cared for me. You know what I'm saying? And my grandmother was adopted by them. I mean, this isn't even blood. Wow. But these are people who took on a family and made a family because they couldn't have children. And uh, they saved my grandmother from a horrible experience in life. And by God, they deserved whatever I could give them back. Yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah, taking absolutely. care of her, I had a baby, <laughs> you know, a two-year-old boy at the time. Uh, disabled wife, she's got problems, um, and you know, autistic child who almost didn't make it. Mm. Uh, too much preemie, you know. Yeah. Great grandmother. What did I do instead of following the career path that I wanted for myself? I chose love and family. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. And yeah. I did the right thing. Mm -hmm. I do yeah. not at all begrudge. Um, I don't regret. No. There's no such thing as regret <laughs> in that situation. You understand? Yeah. I care about them yeah. people mm. so much that it didn't matter what was what I wanted. Right. Is what was best for them was what I wanted. Yeah. So that's what happened. Yeah. Now my son's about to turn 18. Uh, he's graduating high school soon, and. Uh, you know, congratulations, Dublin. Yeah, congratulations, Dublin. I love you very much. I can't wait to see you walk down that aisle. It's going to be so great <laughs> to have the, right. the, 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 the elementary and high school education over with. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah I want to yeah. tell you, just like, just like they told me, if you watch this, when you go to college... It's a totally different animal. It's yeah. completely different. It's your own ball game. It's nobody yeah. else's but your own. You get to pick. Yeah. It's your choice. Now, this interview is being recorded on 420, so <laughs> by the time it airs, he may have graduated. He may have graduated. He's getting real close. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. I love you, kid. Absolutely. Good luck. I'm rooting for you, and we're going to keep you going, all right? Yeah. So, so, so after college, at the, radio, uh, the, uh -huh. the radio, the TV, yeah. Mom dies, you're yeah. taking care of Grandma, mm -hmm. and, and then when Grandma dies... When Grandma dies, I'm still... Um, uh, I decided to do a karaoke DJ service. Mm -hmm. and now, so, so, so dipping the toe back into it well, a little bit. Well, well, now this is what... this this I started this while Grandma was alive. Right. The reason being is... I was working later evenings. So she's in bed by 7.30. Mm. <laughs> I go to work at 9. Right. I get off at 2.30. Wife takes morning shift. La da da. You know, breakfast is on her and everything else. So, yeah. I mean, it's like... It worked good for the right. schedule. Worked, it worked good yeah. for the schedule. Which, which got me singing again. Mm -hmm. Like, really singing, you know? Nice. And so I go out and do these shows and, and sing for people and get people interested in, in singing. Now, I'll tell you, this, there's something about me here I want you all to understand. I support any and all musicians who are trying to do this or learning as they go. And it's, it's such a wonderful thing to watch some of my friends grow. I'm so happy for it a is. lot of them. Mm -hmm. I'm so ecstatic for a few of them are doing super excellent. Um, I'm trying to make my way up there now. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Right. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, it's like it, that kept me moving. It's at least doing something yeah. that that got me that that I was super into. You know, yeah. I, I got to make a living that sustained my household 
and do what I loved, mm. yeah. which was singing, you right, know? Right, And then I started incorporating playing. So I was like, man, I got to get back behind the guitar again. You know, I got to do it. I got to mm. do it. I got to get back behind the guitar again. I got to do this. I got to do this. I, I, I want this so bad. Why aren't you doing this? And then, you know, um, insecurities and everything. Because, I mean, I am a person. I'm a human being. Everybody's human, you know? So I had a lot of insecurities working on it, getting get myself out there again, you know, and working up, up to doing this stuff, and then trying, you know, um, being the the king of the jam stage at, at Sugar Creek Music Festival, <sighs> you know, the 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 side stage act guy who comes at the end of the night when everybody's having a great time and it's all over and everything, and I come out there and I just blow the doors off the place yeah. and just just absolutely just sing my heart out, right. and the whole crowd responds is bam, and I just love it. Mm. And I get to do that once once a year for a while, yeah. you know. And I'm like, you know what? The truth of the matter is, well. I haven't tried writing anything. Mm. You know, why don't I try to write something? For God's sakes, you know. <laughs> you know what? It's about time you just decided to sit down and come up with some concepts for some actual music that you created. Mm -hmm. not, not, not doing covers of other people's stuff. Because, I mean, I got this nickname, Play It Again Sam. Right? <laughs> they, they gave me that as a young man because uh, I would play anything and everything. And, and I've forgotten more songs than a lot of people know, you know. Even if I played them wrong, I still played them, and mm -hmm. I had fun. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know, because it was close. It was really, close. It was close <laughs> enough right, for right. Right. shoes and hand grenades. But, but, you know, as long as I'm entertaining people, it's great. Yeah. You know? So play it again, Sam. And I'm like, man, you know, let's just keep doing this. And it's like, it's about time I write my own music. What can I do there? You know? So... When the pandemic hit, now, now this is this is honestly just in the last couple years, folks. Yeah. Just if you, I'm telling you, if you put your mind to something and you really, really work, you really think about it, you could do things, amazing things. When the pandemic hit and there was nothing else to do but sit in your home and just be alone with your thoughts. <laughs> Scary. I wrote a bunch of music <laughs> and started learning how to play my own songs. All right. And uh, it's. I know it was a horrible time for everybody, and nobody enjoyed it. But, but I you, did. But you did. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was the best thing ever happened to me. Yeah. You, you know what? This is what's funny is we heard so many musicians as we rolled into 2020 going, <sighs> "Oh, we're gonna write music. Mm. We, we don't have to go play since we're we're not playing the bars. We're gonna." Yeah. And everybody said how much music they were gonna write, and really, I didn't see that many yeah. people write that much music. Well, it depends no. on where you look. There is a lot of music being put. Yeah, out. I, yeah. Uh, uh, maybe but, not in your circle, but I was in a gonna lot say yes. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'm just talking about me. I think you were. Yeah, I'm just talking yeah. about me. You know what you did. I, I'm glad. You found you that triple X. World stop, no, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> the world stopped, but the independent music scene did not stop. Yeah. We didn't quit. We didn't care. We, we, we powered through it. If we were sick, we stayed away. Yeah. And we just went for it. Okay? Now, um, I was big about being safe and not going out and spreading a bunch of germs around because right. it was a problem. And if you ask me, my personal opinion is, uh, well, I don't know, maybe a lab that was named the Wuhan uh, 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 Coronavirus Clinical Lab might have had something to do with that in Wuhan. Uh, but, you know, uh, <laughs> it became maybe. a big problem. Maybe. Just maybe. Maybe. Like John Stewart said. I've, like uh, Just uh, maybe. Uh, uh, I blame Randy. Uh, uh, a bat flew into a turkey cloaca. <laughs> And sneezed on my chili. I love Look, that. That's everybody great. knows it wasn't started it was by Randy. one bat. It was at least two bats and a man. It was yeah. Randy. <laughs> it was Randy from South Park and Mickey Simple. Mouse. Yeah, Mickey Mouse. Yeah, they did. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> they did it with integrity, though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, for sure. but, but, you know, let's get back to the subject here. Yeah. Uh, that time in my life uh, gave me the opportunity to actually focus on something else. Now, see, I've done, uh, like, when I did the DJ stuff, I did video editing and put together, like, people's photo albums and stuff and did all that stuff. And I just really get into stuff. Well, like, when I dig in, because I'm a, um, I'm ADHD, if you can't tell. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, it's kind of obvious, right? Oh, it shows. Yeah. Oh, it shows. You're just flaring up right now. Yeah, it's just <laughs> flaring up. And, um, but um, when you get focused, if you're like me, when you get focused on things, you just get focused into them. And you, you do them for hours. My yeah. wife would just... Sometimes she'll just leave the room because she knows I'm going to be playing the same so many bars for the next two and a half hours, possibly. Right. Because until it's right. Until it's right. Right. Yeah. 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 right. And, um, so you got plans for, for a release coming out soon? or something? Well, um, the problem is, is, you know, with the fire and everything. Right, right. Uh, I had like $4,000 in a thing set up there just to make it, uh, just to work on the album, and it got burnt. Mm-hmm. And now, mind you, my community is amazing. These people supported us in amazing ways. Um, we didn't have homeowner's insurance. We only had, like, renter's insurance that threw on the policy a couple years before that. We didn't even know what was coming, mm-hmm. okay? Um, if it wasn't for uh, slipping in a pile of dog and falling in a rose bush, I, I, I wouldn't be in the spot I am now. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally, if it wasn't for this community who got together and raised some money for us... Um, uh, we were living with my father in a back bedroom and, and everything else, just trying to figure out what are we going to do. Um, and uh, a nice uh, religious family had a house that they bought when the college moved to town. Uh, Morthland College was in there, and they had some bad tenants who screwed them out of money and this and that and the other. And actually, the last person that lived there physically died, died in the hospital, not in the house. but. Uh-huh died before they can get her out right you know and they wanted to get rid of this property so uh we didn't get a whole lot of money from the insurance but we did get enough to buy this house yeah nice at like 30 something thousand wow. when it was literally a 70 80 thousand dollar house wow, wow. Nice. they just wanted they wanted it, it out yeah. they wanted it out and yeah. they, and i had the cash and they were like we'll take Donut. the cash nice and we bought the house outright yeah. And we own it. Nice. And now you just got to pay taxes on it. Yeah, pay taxes. <laughs> now I just got to figure out how to make the money to pay everything on it. Right, right. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And the record. Yeah. Right. And the record and on the top record. of all that, right? But and family and first, yeah, so, you know. Family first, yeah. And the record. So, yeah. So, it's, I mean, it's 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 a struggle. It's, it really yeah. is right. a struggle. Right, right. Try, uh, trying to get Finding the personnel now to play with me. Um, my drummer dropped out. He's, he's not going to, the one I was playing with prior. And to be honest with you, I'm, I'm trying to move a little forward anyway. Um, I really enjoy Sam and, and Mark. They're really great guys, and they play really well with me. And we're, we're continuing to practice, so we're yeah. doing that and getting ready for Sugar Creek on the 5th. Uh, I got another friend of mine who's been a drummer for since we were kids who's working on my material. I'm going over to practice with him a little bit. And depending on where he's at on that is whether or not we're a three-piece or a four-piece that day. But I'll tell you what, I think I'm just going to make the professional choice and the professional decision to put what I think's best on the stage yeah. and not try to force something. Yep. Because I think it would be better for me to go with less and show more yeah. and go with more and show less. <laughs> and these are the thoughts that are going through my head right now because we're <laughs> working, so, working so hard. So many things going on on my plate. Like yeah. for the whole next week, I'll be in Nashville Tennessee working for the stagehands union for like a week. Solid. So, so we haven't even got into that. You're yeah, also yeah. a stagehand, and you're a member of the stagehand union where you yeah. go down and work in Kentucky and Tennessee, and mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah. I put together big shows. Yes, sir. I'm yeah. very proud of that. Um, I got a uh, friend of mine, Isaac Cuban. Um, he's a, currently the president of our local uh, local 421, uh, and. Uh, when I got real sick and was hospitalized, <laughs> I okay, have some tragic stories. <laughs> I know. Now, this is true. I My know. life has been one continuous string of un- unfortunate of events of blues. <laughs> and, and, and the truth of the matter is, is I keep I keep a smile on my face because yeah, yeah. they have to. Yeah. Um, I got real sick, almost died. I weighed 487 pounds. They pumped me full of steroids and kept me in the hospital for weeks. Uh, to get me, uh, and this is during COVID time, and I have a respiratory problem due oh, to fungus no. in the basement. After 
my father went in the hospital with a massive septic infection in his leg and I went into his house and we totally tore out all the septic system and we replaced the septic system we got a new refrigerator we have a new stove we put a ramp on the front of the house so in case you needed a wheelchair ramp we did all kinds of things to his home we completely stripped out his carpet and everything in his house and put new stuff down I, I worked really hard on his place to make sure that when he got back from this right. hellacious hospital stay he was mm -hmm. going through he came home with something nice me and his uh, his best friend Sam Jones who's uh, na named after him, and uh, Tyler Riley a good friend of mine we really really you know worked so hard to, to make a better home for him and then I get deathly ill one week ah. after he gets out I get deathly ill <laughs> and uh, so I go in the hospital and when I get out I'm, I'm just unbelievably bad off you know and Isaac said hey man why don't you come with me every morning we're gonna walk down to the park and back you know you need to start walking I'm like okay all right and you start walking and I need to get back to walking like that but uh, I have some other health issues that kind of stop me but uh, uh, so we started walking and I started getting in better better shape then we started going further around the park now now we're going around the park. Now we're going right. uptown and around and getting breakfast and coming back down and around and <laughs> nice. all that good jazz. And he's been working down at the Carson Center in Paducah, Kentucky, and, he, and he's like, well, I'll tell you what, can't promise you anything, but you can come. We need some extra bodies to push some stuff off trucks today, and they need someone to come in. Would you want to come down to the Carson Center and maybe see what the theater's like? I'm like, Yes, <laughs> yes, I, I absolutely would. That would be right up my alley of cool things. Yeah, <laughs> right. And no, no. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I go down there, and I meet some amazing people. Of course, everywhere I go, I meet amazing people. <laughs> That's the truth. I mean, yeah, I mean, I met you. I'm just not meeting you. I, I love people. Um, and, uh, you know, I start learning and going, and, and the next thing you know, they're asking me back to come do this and that and the other, and then they're teaching me, and then they're putting me out of the departments, and they're, like, trying to teach me with this and that and the other, and trying to teach me the ropes of this stuff. And yeah. next thing you know, I'm taking to this like a duck to water because it's just right up my alley <laughs> of, you know, production stuff and right. doing stuff like that. I love it, you know. And I'm a hoss of a guy, and, uh, and I'm a hard worker, and it shows. And I'm very proud. They, they let a bunch of people in when they let me in. It was like a big vote. But for someone to get in on their first year of being down there, uh, to actually be a, become a, a member of the union in less than a year's time is unheard of. Mm. You don't just walk in there and get the, uh, the honor of being a brother to uh, such a group of amazing people. You don't. You have to work for it. And I worked for it really hard, but it came quick. But I'm continuing to work for yeah. it, uh, and I'll and I will forever in a day because I love them. And so um, is that local 421? 421, yeah. There you uh, go, Duke man. and Carbondale. Actually, to tell you the truth, I am missing my first, uh, other than my first official meeting when I got uh, sworn in. Tonight was the first meeting oh, after that, oh. and I, I'm here. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Please send on my love, and I'll be there next month. I promise you, I'll be there next month. But I had this, and I and I don't want to give this up. And, they, mm -hmm. and besides that, they met their they, they put their meeting on 420. They, they should know. They yeah. should know better. No. <laughs> They're stagehands for God's sake. Right. There are no right. drug tests no. with stagehands. No. <laughs> so 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 there you go. You, you, you playing music, mm -hmm. writing music. Mm -hmm. Uh, production and radio and mm -hmm. TV yeah. and and, and oh, uh, stagehand uh, yeah. with a stagehand union. So really this, coming at this it, coming business at it from all is my side. life, yeah. folks. Mm -hmm. If you don't get it, yeah. this business is my life, and, and it has led you to the <laughs> point of playing songs that you've wrote. Yeah. Uh huh. Which I think maybe we should do. Okay, well, uh, I was curious. Is there a specific uh, something we're promoting here tonight with uh, Cornfish that we haven't Corn, mentioned? Cornfish is going to be playing at Sugar Creek Festival. What's the date on that? Oh, that is May 5th. May 5th. Okay. Mm hmm And my set is from 3.30 to 5 so. on Friday, May 5th. 
<laughs> that's the uh, that's the, not the actual Sugar Creek. That is that is family, family jam. jam. Family yep. jam. Yep, it's okay. family Are you going to be back at Sugar Creek? Uh, no. Uh, generally, what what the deal is with that? It's like it may be another year or two before I play Sugar Creek again. You gotcha. Know. They gotcha. they alternate things in and out. You know. So there you uh, go. So what about some of our little festivals? Any of those? You I would be? love to. Um, yeah. I'm having I'm having an issue. Okay. Um, my issue is, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> <laughs> how to ask? Yeah. How to present it? Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm the entertainer. Okay, that's what mm. I do. Well, you he know? knows Marshall, right? Yeah, I know Marshall, yeah, Marshall and I've done his it. festivals. Yeah. I actually jamming at the Springs. If you look on the Cornfish YouTube, yeah. my yeah. entire set from that is broken down into individual tracks, and you can listen to that. Yeah, I wasn't sure so, about Happy Trails. Yeah, but that's me and Sam Smith, just just the two of us. And and Sam, <laughs> it's been a while since we played together. He just said he just agreed to come back me up on okay. it. You know, uh, um, we have been working. Since then, even I mean, things Tighten have improved it. since yeah. then, even, mm-hmm. and cool. I'm so happy about it. Nice. Uh, it's just, it's just. I well, wish I could get more. So, time so, so the voice. the answer is, we are just here to promote Sam. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and everything. Yeah, Sam's I, I just got. knew Happy yeah. Trails yeah. was coming up. I thought, well, maybe awesome. that's it. I, I would know. love to come do solo sets, even if my boys can't make it. Okay. You know? Yeah. Uh, or we would love to have you. I'm, I'm about ready to start. Uh, someone gave me a tip. If I want some of these more professional guys to come play with me they will if <laughs> I organize it all put it out there and like like if I, I'm gonna sit there I'm gonna have a click track playing I'm gonna play through my songs I'm gonna record those just like that solo by myself mm, right. so that other people can study my music right yeah and they so come they can play with me yeah, yeah and they, they can, can learn, learn it. it yeah interesting because yeah, cool. it's kind of hard it's kind of hard to just throw someone into some of the stuff you know because it's some of it's intricate and it takes takes a minute to grasp. All right. Well, let's just have him play now. So we got let's him in town. It. Yeah, let's hear it. Uh, grab grab your guitar grab there. Guitar here. I got you. Just stay comfortable there, sir. Oh, well, thank you, sir. So what are you gonna Coward. play? What are you gonna play for us? Big pins your stage. Summertime. Hand. Oh, that was, <laughs> that was a good song. I like that song. It's something new that I made. Um, and it was the first time I played. It was at uh, out. Was at jamming at the spring. Okay. That, yeah. That, so. Let's see how this goes, shall we? All right, so this is Sam McGinnis. McKinnis. I McKinnis. keep calling him McGinnis because cornfish. Cornfish. that's my stage name. Cornfish. So this, is, this cornfish. is Cornfish in his song, Summertime. We walk in hand in hand 
And I'll be loving you You Sam McGinnis and his song Aww. Summertime. Cornfish. So, cornfish. That is cornfish. Uh, you want to play one more for us? <laughs> we can get her in tune. So there you go, Sam. Uh, not only a singer songwriter, but stagehand, radio guy, TV guy, all that. So, oh my goodness, I'm a little bit everything. I've so. done. My life, I swear, my truth is stranger than most people's fiction. <laughs> That's a fact. Yep. I've done some amazing things. Like, for instance, did you know, when I was working at the radio station, I got the opportunity to be a interviewer at the world's largest outdoor exotic dancing competition. Nice. I mean, well, you yeah. know, I mean... That's a high water mark. It's a pretty interesting, pretty interesting event to that be is, part of. Yes, yeah. I'll tell you, I mean... Indeed. The, you know, Life can lead you to funny places sometimes, right? I've met and spoke uh, with and interviewed like Ron Jeremy. There yeah. you go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I am too. Yeah. You probably yeah. want to wash your hands again. Yeah, wash my hands. <laughs> One more time. Like so. Anyway, that's so we just uh, search for uh, Cornfish on Facebook or yeah, on, YouTube on Facebook and, and YouTube. And you can find, find out what I'm doing. Um, if there's anybody out there who wants, who wants to have me come play for their events, you know, I'm available. Uh, you can get my information off Facebook. Cornfish. There you go. Cornfish, mm -hmm. Facebook, YouTube, mm -hmm. all that. YouTube. So, there you go. Thanks so much for coming down and uh, hanging out with us tonight. Big thanks to our sponsors, Halpin Music and uh, Matt Van Boris of Macias Insurance. You remember him, right? I, I know. <laughs> oh, I, I, he's dead sexy. He is. Uh, so, uh, he's been dealing with a lot of wind lately. He has been. Yeah, so, uh, thanks to them. Uh, big thanks to Sam for, for coming up. And everybody, get out, of course, as we always say, and support local music and art. We are going to end. In the the show tonight with Sam playing us out with one more song. What's what's the what's the name oh, of this next song you're gonna play us? Um, coming out to the show. I think that's a good one. Coming out to the show. There yeah. you go. All right. <laughs>
So come down.